and welcome to part 5 of this series and in this part we are going to do our foam work the horns, the uh, gold accessory that's under the ponytail and this glove I'm also going to talk a bit about how what kind of techniques I was using uh, I won't go too much in depth of the paint job because it was really rushed so I don't have nearly as much footage of that I did add some post-it notes so perhaps that's helping uh, I'm going to try to explain how I made this one I have already filmed how I at assemble the whole thing because it's in three parts uh, I chose to do it that way because I want to have the opportunity to bring this to other conventions that's half a country away and to do that I will need to bring it on the plane and uh, to bring it on the plane I need to have it in a suitcase so I make sure that it fits in my biggest suitcase and uh, I think we can just go on and start with the video yes I guess you want to see and I guess I want to have this video out as soon as possible Let's go! How to pattern and make the horns. First off, you would want to start with any kind of horn pattern that has similar shape. I used one of Kami Cosplay's pattern. I um, cut it out in 2mm EVA foam, made sure to mark all the registration marks, and then taped it together to check the size for reference. This one was too big, so I made it smaller. And by doing so, I just made it smaller from the inside to not uh, play around with the registration marks afterwards. I also made that on the curved side and I've just traced the cutout from one to the other. To get the other way shape, I put in triangles to make the shape go the other way. And then I just taped it together. And since I did not touch the registration marks, uh, on either pieces except where I put in the triangles I could just piece it together quite easily and the registration marks are really important if you find some pattern that actually is the correct shape for Yamato's horns then just buy them or something I didn't find any so I altered Kami Cosplay's pattern to make my own version and I actually missed one registration mark that was chaos so make sure to mark all your registration marks or it will not fit glue the pieces together I used contact cement and as you see I do not wear a respiration mask here you should do that because <laughs> I've read what's on the uh, contents of the contact cement and I'm like oh damn that's really toxic so I'm using respiration marks from now on and you should as well then I go over all the edges with a dremel please use a mask here as well and glasses and then I will go over all the spots where I have dremeled to make sure there is a smooth uh, edge I just used the uh, EVA foam for that and lots of water. How I made the gold hair accessories. First off, you want to check all of your reference photos. Uh, I still made mine the way I did and I'm not happy with it because I would actually like it to be more curved than as straight as they are, but it worked out. I sacrificed a pair of bamboo chopsticks for the two longer parts of the gold hair accessory and I just glued that on 2mm EVA foam and then for the bigger middle part I used a bubble tea straw I again check my reference photos to get the length right Yeah, don't burn yourself. I added a bit of contact cement on the edge to make sure that it really sticks. I did that on all the three parts. Um. 
Then you're going to tremble the edges smooth. And after you've done that, you want to add some foam clay to make the surface even smoother. Use lots of water to make sure that it, all of the edges are really smooth. How I patterned and made Yamato's club. On screen now you can see roughly how the pattern looked uh, without the handle. And the M shape is the most essential part of this uh, whole club. And that is that the point of each M has a 90 degree, so roughly. And when adding all of the corners up, uh, the seam won't be bulky and it will have a nice curve. So while patterning, make sure, make sure that you have the 90-ish degree on the top of that point. The next thing you will need to think about is three keys. And one of them is how wide you want it to be at the top, how wide you want it to be on the bottom, and how tall you want the club to be in total. And then you can just plot that in on your pattern, and then you have the pattern for the whole club. When making the pattern, you will need to make it in at least two pieces. You can make four. But this is to make sure that the club will come out symmetrical. When you start to glue the pieces together, you will need to add your PVC pipe, the core of the whole club. And the attachment that I did was that on certain points throughout the club, I made circles, like spirals of uh, foam to make up for the air space in between the PVC pipe that's in the middle to the EVA foam wall that will go all around. So to do this you will need to glue up the M on each of the two pieces that you have and then heat shape the um, EVA foam that, so that it holds its shape and then you can try to see how much centimeters you will need to have in radius to make up for the space so that when you hold your club it won't wiggle around. This gives it some stability and uh, it also helps with the weight so that you don't fill up the whole area. You could perhaps use some expanding foam, uh, that's a possibility. Uh, I'm not sure if it will work, so if you do, please tell. At the most narrow part of the club, the EVA foam that is on the outside is glued directly to the PVC pipe. The handle, the circle part of the club, is the cardboard of a uh, masking tape roll, which I then added lots of 2mm ABA foam around. And then on top of that again, I added foam clay to make sure that the surface was really smooth. The attachment for that is uh, a soda top. The rounded spikes on the club is 3 quarters of a circle. And then I just glued the sides together and then gave it some heat with the heat gun to then further smooth out so I get a rounded surface. I used 1cm EVA foam for the main parts of the club and where the handle was the most narrow part I thought it was too thick so I sanded it down and instead of having 1cm foam at the most narrow part it got to about 1-2mm to two millimeter foam so I made sure to have a really smooth transition from where I wanted it to be really narrow to not having sanding it at all. Here you can see me standing with the club. It's now on the floor, so you can see how tall it is. Uh, you should think about the height of the shoes, because I didn't and it's kind of short now. It's quite lightweight and it's sturdy because of the way that I made sure the skeleton inside is. I can take this apart in three pieces. You have the circle part, it is a soda top which is attached. And then it's on the middle. So, I actually because of the placement of the middle part, I can actually put in a wire which can support the club to carry it on the back. And especially on conventions, 
to not having the club in my hands all the time is so helpful. So when tightening the soda top, I made sure to watch out for the pattern from the spikes. Quite lightweight and it, it's quite sturdy actually with the wire. And I just attached that to the belt. This is actually more secure with the bows because then it won't have the wiggle room to go back and forth. And it's actually easier to take it on and off because everything is snug. Sanding, priming and painting. You just sand all of your pieces, make sure they are smooth. Then you will prime all your pieces, several layers, and in between your layers, perhaps sand some more. Then you add your base color on all of the pieces, black is nice, and then you paint all of your pieces. A wet brush, dry brush, anything, I'm not too well in painting, so check out other people's tutorials on that. And then make sure to seal everything. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next part.